Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the final tackle. We are joined by the NRLW Roosters debutante, well, one of. Her name is Kennedy Cherrington. Thank you for joining us. And how's the week leading up to the NRLW going for you? I just want to say thank you for having me. Oh, um, thanks. It's um, been pretty exciting. I um, obviously got named yesterday to come off the bench to debut this week. So, obviously, a lot of game prep this week. So, I'm really excited to rip in. Now that's cool. And how's Jamie going as the as the new coach of the Roosters for you guys? Um, so first time having Jamie. My cousins have been coached by Jamie in the past, so they've said that he's been a great coach. And just first hand experience having him for the last three weeks has been awesome. He's helped me learn so much in just a short amount of time with the trip we've had for this week. No, that's awesome. Um, I I know Jamie. He's he's a good mate. He's definitely one of the best um, minds for coaching in my opinion so I'm surprised he hasn't had an NRL contract at some point but you never know um, but he's definitely going to help the Roosters turn it around this year um, so your first game of the NRLW is actually I think against it's the Broncos or is it the Warriors Dragons. okay I, I knew it was either the Dragons but for some reason I don't know why so it's up against the Dragons um, how are you personally going into this game um, I'm going into this game with no expectations. Obviously, my ba- debut, so I want um, to have a clear mind, no pressure, and just want to have fun. No, so. that's fair. No, that's cool. Um, and speaking of, obviously, game day, do you have any game day routines or rituals that you have to do, whether that's a certain breakfast you put or your socks certain... on or anything like that? Um, probably, I'm always up early. Uh-huh. Um, shower straight away, so I'm bright, awake, ready to go. I've always got music pumping on the speaker or in my earphones, and I always have to have overnight oats for breakfast. What, what oats? What did you say? Overnight oats, so oh. just with the milk, yeah, and with the berries and stuff. So it's just a bit of a psychological thing. I like Okay. Going. No, that's totally fair. Um, I think it's just like other people. <laughs> no, no, like some one, one of the people I've interviewed, uh, Tyler Gamble, she said she has to put her left sock and then right sock and then right shoe and then left shoe on to the point where it's carried over into her everyday life as well. Oh, that's, yeah, so that's a big stream. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure. No, that's fair. Um, talking about your footy days, you started out playing rugby before you made the switch to rugby league. Um, you played rugby sevens in the youth Commonwealth Games. What was that like yeah. being able to represent at such an amazing level and, you know, getting the win? I think you guys got the win. Um, so obviously starting rugby league is my junior year. Oh, you did? Okay, sorry. In under tens, eleven, twelves. Um, but then obviously I had to stop playing with the boys, so mm. I went to high school charter, um, you know, skew netball, but they told me I was too short to play. Um and oh. then the, the um, gold medal with the girls winning in 2016 was a massive boost for rugby in Australia. And I jumped over to the Rugby Sevens in high school. Um, that's when I got selected in my um, end of final year in 2016, um, my graduating year, and I got selected in the Youth Aussie Sevens squad. Yep. And then we went to the Bahamas for the Youth Commonwealth oh, Games. Oh, mate. Not only are you at the Commonwealth Games, you're at the bloody Bahamas for it. Yeah, like, no. that's a holiday in itself. <laughs> It really was. Um, we were there for 10 days. Um, and, yeah, it was just such a great place to play and very hot but not too bad. But obviously coming away with the gold with the girls um, was pretty much the the catapult of my career. So it, it really took off from there. So really yeah. Well, I mean, were you signed from the Waratahs after that or before that? And what was it like playing for the Tars? Um, so the Waratahs' first season was 2018, so it wasn't okay. for the year after. Okay. Um, I was playing the Aeon Uni 7s um, mm-hmm. then. At the for player, UTS, I wasn't it? Uh, I started playing for University of New England. Okay. Um, and then Macquarie Uni uh-huh. and then... Um, UTS, and then UTS, so. okay. So there was a few teams before UTS. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty much the same team, just different yeah. universities. Yeah. Um, but going into the Tars in the first season, I just moved over to Sydney by myself when I was... Oh, wow. That was from WA, wasn't it? Yeah, that's so a big really bloody move. Flight <laughs> so bad, but I relocated um, from uh, Perth to Sydney by myself because obviously that would have been scary. Rugby, yeah, it was rugby um, was struggling here. If you knew the Western Force got mm. cut, yep. in all um, community pathways, junior pathways all got cut. So there was really nothing there for me at that stage. So I didn't want to waste my time 
and I'd just gotten back from the Bahamas, so I was thinking, like, what am I going to do? Like, yeah, I want, I want to, I want to do this, but how do I yeah. do it? <laughs> yeah, obviously, I can't stay in Western Australia and Perth, and it was a really tough decision with me being um, a very a family oriented type of person. Yes, yeah, so. sorry to tangent real quick into your family. They're actually massive sports people as well. Uh, from <laughs> what I could find, there was, I think it was your siblings or cousins or something, Ruben and one other that are really making it in the union um, for their yeah. high school over there. What's it feel like to have such a sporting family? Um, so I'm the oldest of four or five. I'm the oldest of five. Um, with all my siblings playing, um, but last year was a big year for us. So all of us made, um, represented our country, Australia. Last wow. Year. So, um, I made it in the 15s and my brother and sister played, um, the youth Valley sevens in New Zealand last year. So. Wow. Congratulations year, to them. That would have been, <laughs> your mum would have been over the moon. Yeah. My mum and dad were really, pretty, pretty proud, but it was something that wasn't, um, too, uh, they weren't really surprised because they knew it would put in the work Okay. and it was that. It was like, okay, it's a matter of time sort of thing. Yeah, it was a matter of time to happen. And just being the oldest sibling, I've always been the one to set the bar and keep setting the bar because I want the best for my siblings and my family to be proud. Yeah, of course. Sorry. Uh, yeah, so continuing back into um, coming back over from so from Perth to New South Wales yeah. um, to play for, you know, rugby union and all that. Um, what was it like when you got to New South Wales? Did you have a plan in motion like, right, I'm going to go to trial days or, you know, what was the go from there? Um, so I had already had family in Sydney because I was actually born in New South Wales. Okay. And relocated to Perth and then I came back. Mm-hmm. So, um, because of my dad and working and all that stuff. Um, so, I had a plan to get a contract with the Seven. Okay. Which obviously hasn't, hasn't happened. You know, it still might be on books. But that year, I was just really focused on Sevens. Um, the Waratahs opportunity was just the more of an experience to just play footy at that time. Mm-hmm. Um, first year of the Super W competition. And, um, yeah, the Waratahs was, is, is still such an awesome pathway to go through. So, that really helped um my 15s knowledge because the first waratahs game was my first 15s game so yep. <laughs> so just to play in that type of competition with um those sort of athletes was just um really good game time for me to have the experience what was the difference obviously there's a massive difference between 15 and 7 but like what was the p- differences for you personally and how did you adjust to the differences from sevens going into the 15s in the super w um, obviously, seven. That's a good question. <laughs> obviously, <laughs> seven is a lot faster. Yeah, for um, sure. Maybe a lot fitter, and you've got a lot, a lot more touch on the ball. But mm. there's advantages and disadvantages like going back and forth in the game. Obviously, 15s is a territory game, it's a game of inches, like really strategic technicalities. Um, I found that really difficult because you still had to learn the rules. But once I kept watching, um, you know, the likes of Hur- Hurricanes, Crusaders, that type. of gameplay um I, I was clicking over my head so i was using my you know um fast touch on the ball stuff like that to my advantage in 15 yep. but then it, it helps in 15 when you get a bit of a rest so mm. you're still at that fitness seven fitness playing in the 15 game if you know what i mean yeah yeah, yeah. I, I get it now that's cool yeah. um <clears throat> Sorry about that, cough. Um, you've played in the Harvey Norman Women's Premiership for the Sharks. Unfortunately, getting just short of the grand final this season to the Mighty Bears. <laughs> but um, you still had a wonderful season this season. What was it like um, playing, you know, at that level of rugby league um, in, in general? And, <laughs> and for the Sharks. <laughs> so this this season was pretty funny. So December last year, Tiana Penatani messaged me, um, asking if I'd come down and give league a crack this year. And I was like, oh, I'm not really keen. Like, I was really focused on... Sevens. Rugby. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Because um, World Cup year, uh, World mm. Cup year, next year for women. Um, yep. And I was just so focused. And I didn't really, you know, put my thoughts into league. Um, again, I was just, like, really focused on 15. And then she messaged them again in February, and this is before pre-COVID, all the stuff happened. Yeah, and I was yeah. like, oh, I might think about it. And then obviously all the COVID stuff happened, and I had to quickly race back to Perth, and I got stranded there for four months. Oh, um, she- I was grateful, though, to be with my family, because there was no footy. Mm. And obviously I had no job at the time because of COVID. COVID, yep. 
So if anything, it was, as you said, it was the perfect time to go over to WA. Yeah, it really was. And then obviously I um, just did some thinking back in Perth, you know, I really, I, I didn't really want to play footy at that stage. I was in a really bad state mentally. Um, as in you didn't want to play footy at all, union or league, or just, was it just league? I was, I was just completely off playing anything. I was in a really bad mental state and um, going home for that four months really helped me get back on track and then as soon as I got back I was the fittest fast I've ever been and pretty much popped off the plane in July yep July July 1st and went straight to my first training camp for Cronulla wow so, and what was it like going to the first training camp for Cronulla because Cronulla is such an amazing system and Rowan Sims as far as I'm led to believe is in the system yeah. it helps out there as well which would also help out at the Roosters just everything in general what was it like there for yeah. you in your first camp and your first season playing that level of rugby league yeah so obviously it was a lot different I had a lot to learn but obviously with the welcoming environment the Sharks provide Glenn Braley is such an awesome coach obviously credit to him and his two sons that play NRL yeah um, and Ruan Sims with the experience she's had, she's pretty much took me under her wing and taught me in like two weeks just the basic fundamentals of where I need to run, do I need to stand flat, do I need to stand... Well, because she's played that. union and league, so she would yeah. know how to help, that is for sure, yeah. yeah. Really good for me, and I was just finding in areas like um, just tweaking it just to help me in my game because um, it wasn't until a couple of weeks into the Harvey Norman season I made the decision to stop playing club union for rounds. Okay, so you've decided to stick with league now. Yeah. Wow. So I, okay. um, I made this just the decision because I was playing double code for four weeks. And oh, that would have really thrown you off as well. That would have got you so tired. I was training Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, doing contact Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and then playing two games on Saturday. So my body wasn't liking me for a couple of weeks. So I just made the decision when I got the call up from Jamie Feeney. Um, that he wanted me a part of the 30 um, to make this decision. Okay, I need to be sensible. I need to be responsible for my body. And yeah. And devote Cronulla. all your time to Cronulla and, Sh- and Roosters and all and that. Roosters. Yeah. Well, yeah. and speaking of the Roosters and focusing all your time, um, you are Maori and you are also Australian. Where would, Where yeah. is your allegiance lying when, if or when the call up for international footy um, comes around next year for the World Cup? Um, so my allegiance lies to Australia. Um, a lot Where does your heart does your heart lie in New Zealand, or is it just always Australia? Um, no, my heart lies to Australia too. A lot of people ask me, and my siblings especially, like, why do you play for Australia? Why do you choose to play for Australia? Or you know, even some family members are just like, oh, you shouldn't be doing that. There's a lot of yeah, kinda, big a bit of a dilemma for my family and I. And I say, um, to play for Australia, my this country gave my family the opportunity to give us kids the opportunity. So I was born in Sydney yep. and yeah, that's my reason. So No, that's yeah. totally fair. Like it's a, um, yeah. but also it's, they're the first country that offered the opportunity to play for yeah. that national, you know, like if New Zealand were to say, Hey, we want you like before Australia had, I'm sure you would have chosen New Zealand as well. Yeah, because it probably would have been different, but um you know, I, I'm Maldi and I'm I am eligible to play Maldis next year. Mm-hmm. Um, in the All Stars Indigenous. Oh, okay, that that'll be I, awesome. Yeah, so that, that that'll be your different. that'll be your um counteracting that sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. So I asked Jamie Finney last uh, last last week actually. I was like, can I? Am I eligible for that? Even though, yeah, and he was like, yeah, yeah, Botil, Betty Walsh, yep, and yep. Cole Greg have done it too. So yep. I was like, oh, okay, that's awesome. Okay, so, yeah, I can go to my culture. Okay, that's awesome. That's 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 where it's at. That's what you want to do. Um, exactly. <laughs> switching to some fun sort of topics. Um, what's your current Netflix binge? Um, I just finished uh, uh, what's it called Umbrella Academy. Okay, any uh, good? It's, yeah, it's pretty good. And Outer Banks. I don't know. They're just TikTok series that made me watch them. I was like, well, might as well give it a crack. And um. Yeah, that's that's the only episodes and seasons I finished at the moment. What about you? I was literally about to say, yeah, that sounds awesome. The one I've just started binging, it's only eight eight episodes long because they're doing season two now. It's called Ratchet. It's based off um, the nurse Ratchet from One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. It's so good. It's so like psycho, but it's so good. Um, it's, it, it's got. Um, uh, Sarah Paulson in it. She's from American Horror Story. She plays the reporter in um, Asylum. Oh, I just, I love it. It's, I cannot, people, get onto it. It's so good. Okay. Um, I 
this is last night, so I might have to start. Them. I'll do it. Like they are long; they're like an hour, hour and ten minute long episodes. But it's a, it's a, it's a psychological like roller coaster. But it's so good. Um, uh, how do you like your steak cooked? Um, or are you vegetarian? <laughs> so, wait, um, medium. I'm. I, everyone says medium rare, but I like medium. I like medium, it not red. Yeah. No, that's Everyone fair. As long as you don't like it well done, then that's all right. Because no, that's criminal. Like, it tastes like plastic. It tastes like plastic. It tastes like rubber. I was like, no, it's actually cooked. Yeah, like <laughs> medium and medium rare and all that. Anyway, I, I like medium rare to medium, but I don't like well done. Because then it's oh, a, it's a, mate, yeah. how do you talk to someone who eats that? It's like, you can't, they're still chewing. Like, that's how, ba- yeah. that's how bad well done is. Um <laughs> Some people have a Macau still mooing. It's still too bad. <laughs> oh, yeah, blue. Oh, oh, yeah, no, nah, no, thanks. One of my friends said that their one of their friends um, likes it, like, extra, extra blue, as in, like, they literally go level, like, literally, that's it. And I'm like, mates, that's, that's, that's foul. Like, that's too chewy on the other side of shit. <laughs> Each to their own. Each yeah, their own. very true, very true. Um, I'm just looking at the list and seeing what else. Um, who was your inspiration um, and or what was your inspiration, not just to come over to New South Wales, but in general, you know, to really um, push you to your limits to, um, you know, reach the best that you can in the sports? I know this sounds cliche, but it has to be my parents. Um, they're always... In- uh, every day actually every game they always give me the hard truth because they believe and i believe that you can't sugarcoat something you can't go no. anywhere in this you know little bubble um you got to have a hard truth and they're my biggest critics but they don't mean it to be nasty no they do it that's like hey you can improve on this sort yeah, of thing how i can improve and obviously it's had a result like look where i am now yeah. like these results were credits in my parents so yeah, I'm, I'm really grateful for my mom and dad. No, nah, that's awesome. Um, and I, just looking at the list, I think that's about it, except one last topic, and that's what advice would you give to any young girls who want to make it in, whether it's the rugby or rugby league, um, NRLW, Harvey Norman Premiership in general? Um, I say, this is what I've told my little sister, um, you can never stop learning. You can always learn from whoever, whatever coach, you can always never stop learning and always be that athlete that can be coachable because you know um a lot of these kids come in and they've got big heads and they think they they know it all yeah but it takes the coach to see that kid that's going to put in the extra work and the ones that's going to be coachable respectful that are going to go the long way yeah, exactly. Like, yeah, be coachable and do the extras, you know. And those extras exactly. will, will, will won't go unnoticed, you know. Eventually, you will get a start. Especially, especially at this level, you will get exposed. So, yeah, it does it does take that little bit extra to go that little bit further. No, nah, that's fair. And I guess I, um, one last topic, really, to wrap up. Um, going into the NRLW season, um, obviously you've got the Dragons coming up in round one. Um, and the Broncos, obviously, are the benchmark at the moment in the NRLW, winning two in a row. Um, which team do you personally want to, um, you could say, take on or verse the most, you know, um, out of all of the teams, the Warriors, the Dragons, or just take it as it comes sort of thing? Uh, so as a te- uh, me personally, I'm just ready to give anyone a crack. Obviously, yeah. new to the comp, I'm just keen to rip in, do my best, and just make the difference and really put my name on the table but yeah, yeah. as a team there's a lot of banter with um obviously the broncos being the best yep. at the moment but it's the dragons um obviously being the only two two new south wales teams so and isabel kelly has jumped ship and gone from the roosters to the dragons so that'll yeah. be an interesting game well us girls have said we want a roosters warriors final so that would be cool. I would love to see that, actually, because, yeah. not going to lie, the Broncos have been dominant the last two years. Unfortunately, it can't transform, transpire or transpose, whatever the word is, over into the NRL, because we know yeah. how that went this year. But the women, yeah, I'd love to see a, a Roosters-Warriors or a Dragons-Roosters um, grand final. Yeah. Oh, they're, they're, I've seen the four squads and all players are high quality. So oh, it's it's like <laughs> top tier. Like, well, I mean, obviously it is, but you know what I mean. This year, it's, it's going to be such a good comp, and mm. obviously it's a lot different to the first two years, so I really can't wait. 
Well, that's amazing. Um, and that's basically everything I have uh-huh. done. So thank you very much. You're awesome. Thank you. <laughs>